Hello and welcome into this week's edition of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from R&N. On tonight's edition of the Trucks Rewind, we're looking back at... Uh, it'll end up being yesterday's truck race by the time this goes up. The 21st annual UNOH 200, 200 laps, 106 miles from the half mile Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. Always a fun race. It's Bristol, baby. How can you not have fun with Bristol? Not as many incidents, though, as we're used to from a Bristol race uh, tonight. Five for 38 laps was the number of cautions on the night. First one at lap 14 for the 30 of Scott Legacy Jr. spinning on the front stretch. And the other caution in stage number one came at lap 27 with the 04 truck of Corey Roper spinning in turn number two. Stage one concluded at lap 55. Stage number one went to John Hunter Nemechek. Stage two, we had a couple more incidents in stage number two. First one at lap 69 for Todd Gilland spinning in turn number four, making a slight bit of contact with the 97 truck of Jesse Little as he made the spin. And the other caution in stage number two was at lap 112 as Myatt Snyder spun off of turn number four. He just kind of pushed up a little bit into Noah Gragson and then spun off of the driver's side of Noah Gragson, spins down the front stretch. Um, had an interesting time getting back to pit road after this as he had blown all four tires. Uh, so not an easy truck to control to get back to pit road, but he was able to do it. Stage two concluded at, uh, well, that would have been at lap 112 for that same caution with Myatt Snyder. John Hunter Imachek wins stage number two as well. Stage three, no cautions. We went caution-free all the way through stage number three, allowing for some great Bristol racing. John Hunter Imachek looked like he had the race well in hand until the late laps. I'm not really sure what happened to the eight truck, but... John Hunter lost a lot of speed there in the last few laps. Looked like he had it well in hand until about five laps to go when Johnny Sauter and Stuart Friesen both get by him. And then Johnny Sauter and Stuart Friesen have a really good battle for the win. Johnny Sauter comes away with the victory. So close once again for a first career victory for Stuart Friesen, but not able to do it tonight. Maybe we'll see it in the playoffs. That would be an interesting turn of events for Stuart Friesen to get his first career win uh, to advance at some point in the playoffs. Lap leaders on the night, John Hunter Nemechek did lead the most laps, 104 of the 200 laps. Johnny Sauter led 58 laps. Christopher Bell led 31 and 7 laps went to Noah Gragson. All right, so we'll get into your results on the night. And as we said, John, Johnny Sauter wins this one, his fifth win of the season, and just pads that uh, regular season championship that he had already locked up going into the night, this being the final race of the regular season for the trucks. Stuart Friesen comes home in the second position. John Hunter Nemechek in third. A great run from Parker Kligerman in the fourth position. And Todd Gilliland... Battled his way all the way back to the fifth position, trying desperately to pick up that win to get himself into the playoffs as he just could not point his way in after missing as many races as he did at the beginning of the season. Just couldn't quite get back there after that spin on lap 69. Just could not quite get back there. I'd like to have been able to see what Todd could have done had he gotten back to the front. Rest of your top 10 were Justin Haley, Ben Rhodes, Matt Kraft, and Noah Gragson, and Grant Infinger. We see a lot of playoff contenders here in the top 10. Uh, I believe, what do we have here? Five, seven of the top 10 are playoff eligible drivers. 11th through 20th on the night, Dalton Sargent. Uh, another one of those guys looking to win his way into the playoffs. Wasn't able to do it. 11th on the night, last truck on the lead lap. Riley Herbst making his second career truck series start comes home in a respectable 15th place finish. Cody Robaugh making his first career 
truck series start in that nine truck. We've seen him sporadically on the Arca side of things this season. He came home in the 16th position in his first career truck start. And then here in 17th, we see Stefan Parsons, the son of NASCAR veteran Phil Parsons, making his first career truck start as well, came home in the 17th position. Brett Moffat had an unscheduled pit stop late and never could quite battle back from that, even after finishing third in stage number two, 18th, two laps down on the night for Brett Moffat. Cody Coughlin there in the 19th position as well. 21st through 30th, we see Jesse Little down here in the 26th position. He ended up six laps down after that contact with Todd Gilliland there in the middle portions of the race. Never could quite fight back from that. Christopher Bell, 16 laps off the pace in that 28th position. Myatt Snyder also having problems at the end of the race. We, we talked about those. 29th on the night for Myatt Snyder. Then we see down here 31st, 32nd, last page, Scott Legacy Jr. and Bailey Curry. All right, so that's your results on the night for the UNOH 200. So we'll slide over to the Media Center and we'll see what your top finishers on the night had to say, including race winner and regular season champion Johnny Sauter. Oh, I don't know. Um, we were racing hard there at the end, and uh, Johnny did a good job just, just holding me down so I couldn't get a good run up off the corner, and that's uh, that's what you're supposed to do. So, um that was it. I, I, I thought I had him pinched behind a lap car and just gave him, <clears throat> gave him a little bit too much room. And, uh, you know, I gave him an inch and he took it and then, and got back by there. So, uh, proud of my guys. Uh, we battled, you know, we didn't have a great, uh, Silverado there in, in first practice this morning and, uh, they threw the kitchen sink at it. And, and, you know, by the end of second practice, we mocked up really good and then kind of lost it a little bit during time trials. And then, it, you know, they came right back, uh, for the race. So proud of my guys, uh, Proud of Chevy, proud of uh, Halmar and, and, and Chris Larson for this opportunity to compete here, and um, we'll, uh, we'll keep digging. What makes a good race car driver is to be able to forget about last week. And uh, uh, Kevin Harvick told me that a long time ago when I drove for him in 2004, and it was one of the best things that he taught me was just I would be pissed off, and I would carry it to the next week. He's just, you got to learn at midnight. Sunday at midnight, let it go. You're only as good as your last race, but if you sit there and carry it, it's going to kill you. So that was one of the things that has helped me a lot. Just It's really hard to do, and it took me a long time to be able to do that. Just forget about it. Um, we've been really up and down. I mean, the last month and a half, we've had some really good runs. We feel like we know where we have went wrong in some of the areas. So I feel very confident in some of the next races. Uh, have you ever road course raced before? No. <laughs> <laughs> have you? couple times well i think uh you know last week was the ultimate kick in the pants for me and uh been beating myself up pretty hard all week and uh, i was like we're gonna go to bristol and we gotta win this thing so um yeah i you know i don't think anybody ever got complacent i think uh, we got off our game a little bit at uh, kentucky and eldora is always tough for me but uh you know, I got a couple of pit road speeding penalties, one at Pocono, one at, or two violations at Kentucky, and I was like, boy, you better pull it together. And then last week, I was like, you really better pull it together. So, um, yeah, the guys are, are doing a good job, doing a great job. Um, can't thank GMS enough for, for everything. Obviously, GMS Fabrication was on the truck tonight with a cool paint scheme, and, um, you know, we just keep digging. And winning races is the ultimate, and... Uh, there's nothing in the world that feels as good as this, especially at a place like Bristol. This is so cool. Um, I know things had to work out a little bit for us to get the win, but um, we fought hard all night and found ourselves in position, and that's what it takes sometimes. So um, we just got to keep her going. And, you know, the Chase racetracks are all really good racetracks for us, so I feel really good about the stretch. All right, we'll take a look at your playoff grid before wrapping up here tonight, and we have officially... Gotten into playoff time for the Camping World Truck Series. This is your official playoff grid as we head into the playoffs. Your eight championship eligible drivers to start the 2018 playoffs. Johnny Sauter, Brett Moffat, Noah Gregson, Ben Rhodes, Stuart Friesen, Grant Infinger, Justin Haley, and Matt Crafton. A 39-point gap now as we have reset things from Johnny Sauter to Matt Crafton down here at the bottom. Uh... The top six will advance out of the first round. We'll talk more in-depth on this. We'll have a special uh, Truck Series playoff 
preview coming up at some point in the coming week. I don't know exactly when that will be this week, but it will we'll, we'll have it at some point this week, and we will go more in-depth with the playoff grid, the playoffs itself, what races, the, that kind of thing. Um, but the first round that will be the next three races, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park starting on a road course. Then they will go to the one and a half mile Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And they will end the first round at Talladega. So a very diverse first round for the trucks. Johnny Sauter already starting off with a 15 point lead. So a very uh, sizable gap to start off here. Um, it's going to be uh, pretty hard to dethrone Johnny Sauter um, as we head in through the first round of these playoffs because he has amassed a lot of playoff points as we get into these playoffs. Uh, and and a lot of that comes from the regular season championship win as that awards 15 playoff points. So um, that right there is the difference for Johnny Sauter right now. Um, just a very big lead. Uh, not insurmountable, especially for uh, some of these guys, uh, Brett Moffat, Noah Gragson, these guys that have been pretty close to Johnny all season. Not an insurmountable gap, but a fairly large gap to start things off nonetheless. All right, so that is your playoff grid for the trucks following Bristol and heading into the playoffs, and I think that will do it for us tonight. Of course, we will have an Xfinity Rewind coming up tomorrow night, Friday night. Uh, actually, that will probably end up being tonight once this show goes up uh, with this race ending so late. Uh, this will definitely go up after midnight. Um, so yeah, tonight there will be an Xfinity Rewind uh, for their race, the Food City 300 from Bristol. That'll be later this evening. And then, of course, a Cup Rewind on Saturday night. Uh, that one will probably be a bit of a different location. That will actually probably be from the hotel in Springfield. Um, as I will already be in Springfield getting ready for the ARCA race on Sunday. And of course, obviously, there will be an ARCA Rewind Sunday night, probably later Sunday night, as I will end up coming back before doing that. So lots of stuff happening this weekend. And then, of course, pole position as usual. Monday night, 8 p.m. to wrap up all of that, all the Bristol action, all the Springfield action, as well as IndyCar action this weekend as well. So we got a lot going on this weekend here on RNN. And we hope you stick around for all of that. If you haven't already, you need to go down and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of that this weekend and anything else going forward from RNN. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that big thumbs up button. It is much appreciated when you do. So with that, this has been the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.